I want to be clear that I do not think they are true. Hmm. But if the rumors are true that Travis Kelsey is dating Taylor Swift. Yes. What does that breakup song look like? He had a titan, but his brain was just a little hazy. And I think games are just a bore. That was, that was really good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a Swiftie. <laughs> that was really good. That was really good. I like to look at things on the optimistic side of things. And what if this is the relationship that finally puts an end to those type of songs from Taylor Swift? Oh, please. Come on. Welcome back to the L. Duncan Show. I'm the aforementioned L. Duncan. He's Gary Streisky. Gary Streisky. Gary. Talk to me. No. Okay. Don't. <laughs> First of all, it is 100% a part of Taylor Swift's sort of artistry that she has <sighs> heartache and pain. Yes. She has to have breakups. I'm sure we're going to hear a lot about this last dude that she dated that lasted for a cup of coffee. I, this is not real. And let me tell you how I know it's not real. It just, it's a rumor that appeared out of nowhere. Well, it did. It appeared out of nowhere. It's not like we saw a picture. It's not like there was even a, people saw them eating. This is literally one of those rumors that just, out of nowhere, you just started seeing on your algorithm. Mm -hmm. Is Travis Kelsey dating Taylor Swift? Total fabricated, made up, bullshit. <laughs> Oh, you say that, but I think that there are context clues that have presented themselves over the past couple what? of weeks that lend themselves to a touch of credence. What? A couple of anonymous friends <laughs> saying My that point. the two have hung out. Who? That texts have been exchanged. Okay. Breaking news as of today. Travis Kelsey was on the Pat McAfee show. And at least we know this. At the very least, he has her number and he has sent tweets talking about, hey, I've seen you rock okay, the stage at Arrowhead. Let's, let's listen to this this sound from Pat McAfee. Maybe uh, I've seen you rock the stage in Arrowhead. You might have to come see me rock the stage in confirmed. Arrowhead. Confirmed. He's not kiss and tell. He just confirmed what exactly what I said. He doesn't know that woman. That's like Joel and Bede <laughs> saying he was dating Rihanna because he used to tweet at her. That's not true. It's not real. That's not a real thing. He just confirmed it in your face. Him and his brother, they're all in on it. We've reached the part of the NFL season, folks, where these rumors are coming up. I just like the sentence constructed as he doesn't know that woman he doesn't as if know it's just her. two pedestrians he doesn't know her <laughs> yeah but they're not and let me tell you why because in our world yes. you know we're just regular laymen we're just regs uh -huh. okay Correct. in the celebrity world in sure. the hollywood world they couldn't be farther apart travis whoa, kelsey whoa. listen okay my bad travis my bad. kelsey is an a-lister in the sports world thank you true or false true right true okay yeah true or false true true i said it i'll say it again taylor swift is an A-lister in the world. She's, she's, she, it is her moment. She is the biggest name in the world. Correct. Taylor Swift is not kicking it at Chief's Kingdom, hanging out with Travis Kelsey. I don't believe it. See, and I do. I don't believe it. I do. I think. Uh, and, the, and the reason it's catching so much fire is because it is so nonsensical. I don't think if it's you had heard a rumor that Tom Brady and Taylor Swift were even dating, you might go, okay, like well, I could see that, and that it's Travis Kelsey specifically. I don't think it's nonsensical at all. It's one hundred percent false. They are both A-listers and having their moment at the top of their games currently. L, and I'm going to be honest with you, you're saying that there's no shot that this happens, no. and that you know it's part of Taylor Swift's makeup to go through breakups. There's a real life, living, breathing example of. The pot of gold on the end of that rainbow. What are you talking about? Adele and Rich Paul. Okay. Come on. It's fair. Come on. When's the last time Elle came, or Adele came out with a banger? She hasn't ever since she found herself in a nice relationship. Matter of fact, she's had to be like, yo, I got to just play the hits. I need to sign a residency. Yeah. Well, because she's not sad girl anymore. And sad girl music Maybe Taylor Swift doesn't want to be a sad girl anymore. Maybe she wants to be a happy girl and tickle Travis Kelsey's little mustache and okay. say, oh my gosh, I should have dated a man with some, some facial hair. In my past. Is that? That tickles. That's what you think of when you think of Travis Kelsey? <laughs> facial I mean, hair? How do you not? It's just a mustache. It doesn't look right. I also think these are the same people peddling the same garbage that Odell Beckham Jr. is dating Kim Kardashian. It's, I don't believe any of this. You don't have any credence this in that either? This is the same. Come on. Th this is literally. Why do you keep saying credence? Where did you? Did you learn a big new CCR word this fan. week? A big CCR fan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Clearwater once we 
get to that point. I, I'm fascinated. You've literally snuck in the word. Three times. I haven't heard three anybody times. say credence in years, and then you snuck it in, in three times three in a three-minute conversation. I'm one of those guys that kind of latches on to a word that I'm like, this is a fun new word that's going to make me sound smart, and I just use, ah. I just abuse the hell out of it for the next two weeks on every platform that I'm on, whether it's this, SportsCenter, Snapchat, or SportsCenter AM, and then I just retire it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when Cher used to teach Ty the word of the day in the movie Clueless. Yes. She didn't think that she was that smart, so she'd be like, use it in a sentence. Exactly. Thank you. And then it Aww. gave her some credence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then it gave her some credence, <laughs> and that conversation, um, you know, kind of blossomed from there. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you for oh my hammering home the point, L. I don't Felt know. What, it just okay. Well, that's fine. We're gonna. I love that though. Maybe we thank could you. like do suggestions for like a word Gary's of the day. Word of the day. How he can sneak in his word in the podcast. Although sneaking is not exactly what you're doing. You're literally very hammering it in like a jackhammer. I am very, very overtly using I this see, word. Yeah. I can say it. Don't ask me to spell it. Yeah. Okay. No, you said you like CCR. You don't know how to spell their name. When you go to type it in in Spotify, what do you type in? Well, it's the uh, it's the autofill. Okay. So I get to C R E. Okay. And it's like you must be talking about either Creed. Or it's not <laughs> oh. No, one's no that's Daughtry. That's no Daughtry. No one's ever talking about Creed. Creed. What did you just First say? First of all, Creed's coming back. Daughtry. They're not. Stop it. They're not coming back. Stop it. This is, is this already our ADD tour? <laughs> We're absolutely on an ADD tour because I would die on this ADD tour. Creed has never been coming back because they've never really truly arrived. Stop. One song does not a coming back you make. No one's looking out for the collective soul renaissance tour. No one's looking out for any of these people. Maybe Goo Goo Dolls at best. But from that time. I listen to Creed regularly <laughs> i they do they have one song gary they have with a, arms uh, wide open no no they also have um higher yeah can you yes. take they have one of the most Garbage. iconic halftime shows in the history of thanksgiving day what cowboy stadium i do remember that yeah right. how could you forget uh well they're very forgettable that creep. wow okay so okay so back, they, so back to you they named being... the whole movie franchise after them oh god <laughs> For those of you that aren't watching, he is making a face. I want you to know he does recognize that what he just said was categorically and patently false. But I do want to go back to forcing you to spell credence. C R E E D E. Did you just Google it? No, I actually Googled Creed. You know the first thing that popped up? The cologne. <laughs> this, not sponsored. Okay, and so we're going to get back on. Yes. In fact, we're going to get back on our bandwagons. Let's do that. Because I mentioned that. This is the time of the year where we're getting these like stupid rumors. This yes. is also the time of the year, as we move into week three of the NFL season, uh -huh. where we are already calling bust on our teams. Yes. And uh, I am, for those of you Oof. that don't know, you hear me and my allegiances to Atlanta a lot. I am, of course, born and raised in Atlanta, but yep. my whole family, both sides, sister included, all from Colorado. Yep. Inherited the Denver Broncos since birth. They've always been my team. And... Yet again, they're hot, gar they're, hot garbage. They're, they're trash. They're doo-doo. Doo -doo you dolls. were a Patriots fan for a long time. It yes. felt good to you. Yes. I've, for many years, thought you to be a turncoat because you are, in fact, from Denver, yes. and you are not a Broncos fan. It's weird to me. The Patriots are trash. They're not a good football right. team. They are not a good football They looked good uh -huh. in their last game in the Pat Patriot throwbacks. They do not look good in the art of playing football. Sure. Okay. So with that in mind... Yes. I think it's totally okay to bandwagon another team. This is the first thing we've agreed on in three episodes, I really? believe. Uh, you know me. Yeah. You you know me. Mm -hmm. I I don't subscribe to um, society's norms that the city in which you were born is automatically the city you must root for as it relates to professional sports teams. Okay. You, born in Atlanta, are yeah. a Denver Broncos fan. Right. I, born in Korea, but grew up in Denver – hate the Denver Broncos. You do. I've never, and yeah. I've been on record, we go 10 years back, yeah. and when we first never met, liked them. you were like, I like the Broncos. Like, I hate the Broncos. Yeah, you, I've never yeah. liked the Broncos. Mm -hmm. Early 2000s, I started liking the Patriots because I love Tom Brady. Yeah, you think he he's left, handsome. I think he's handsome. I'm like, wow, his yeah. hairline's incredible. Yeah. I wonder if it's natural. Um, it's not. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, I love Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. When he left, I said, okay, well, he was my rooting interest, and he left the same season Mookie Betts left the Red Sox. So yeah. I went on a sports sabbatical. Okay. I still love the Red Sox, but I don't subscribe to this like, man, imagine being born. 
I love the city. I love the city, and they're coming back around, especially as it relates to the Lions. But imagine being born in Detroit these last 20 years, and you're like, damn, I got to like the Lions? Yeah. Thanksgiving's going to suck every year. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, and I'm with you there. I think people have gripes with bandwagoning when you watch your team after a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. You've decided. You went ahead and verdict is in. Yes. They're you know guilty of being trash, yes. and so I'm going to bail. Yes. I think people have issues with you all of a sudden, like, rooting for other teams. You have to be really overt with your bandwagonness, like Mina Kimes with the Nets, right? Like, it's hilarious. Yes. Everyone's in on it. Mm-hmm. They love it. They love that she she doesn't, you know, really she doesn't have a team. She's from Seattle. They moved, all that. But people mostly are upset with the idea that you would have any vested interest in anyone else doing well other than your team. And I call foul on that only because... As sports fans, I don't want to have to mentally check out two weeks into the NFL season. We've I'm got saying, 16 weeks to go. It's, it's September. Unfa- thank you. It's unfair to me, Gary. The leaves are still on the trees. Right. It's not even chilly weather yet. It was chilly last night a little bit. Well, I meant like actual eating oh, and the consumption oh, 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 of chilly. Yeah, eating chili. <laughs> I meant tubs and bats of chili. I get you. I get you. Shout out to Denver, the green chili capital of these United States of America. Yes, nothing wrong with obviously being born in a city, yeah. being born in a town, and riding with that city to the death. I mean, listen, it's been fantastic for residents of Boston for the last two decades, and now they are on they are on the downturn. Sure. They are on the downturn. Yeah, they're and watching it's it. Not, it's not looking good anytime mm-hmm. soon. Yeah. I just don't subscribe to having to live that way. Sure. I've been a nomad the last 10 years. I like seeing people and places do well that I have an attachment to. Yeah. It's not a permanent attachment. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Although I do root for South Korea in the World Cup and the Olympics, of course, <laughs> and, of course, the old USA. So you're a Benedict Arnold. That's the, fine. Do you know – no, you know what? Never mind. It was a half-baked thought. Okay. Yeah, it's a half-baked thought. We only like full-baked thoughts here. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Anyone Couldn't that's listened to the show is like, these are lies. <laughs> so I think some of the most bandwagonable teams right now in the sports world yes. um, would be – the Lakers. The Lakers oh, are a huge franchise, don't get me wrong, but certainly LeBron goes yes. there and there's more. Yes. I think um, Cowboys, obviously. Cowboys. There doesn't there's not a day goes by that the Cowboys aren't in a sports center rundown, whether Yeehaw. it's at the six PM or in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yes, one hundred percent. Which I think is so funny because Ronnie, our director, he's a diehard Eagles fan, so sometimes well not sometimes, every single time the Cowboys are in, he will pick the least flattering picture of Dak Prescott. <laughs> Even if it's a positive yeah. story. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, great behind-the-scenes BTS here. We are incredibly petty. Yes. And if we don't like your yes. team, we will. We'll choose unflat. I'll ask yes. my person to make sure that the B-roll, even if we're just talking yes. about anything, yes. is of your team fumbling the ball. Yes. We are that petty. And so yes. I, I want to be clear there. Yes. Um, we are human, too. We are human, too. And also, we wield the power to do it, so we shall. Dion and Colorado are the kings of bandwagons right That's now. That's a fact. Everybody That's a fact. is a fan. Um, and they should be. It's really fun what's happening. Yes. I also said to someone that I think it's a perfect storm of events for Colorado. I, Denver is, Colorado is, and always will be a Broncos town. Even when CU was really good back in the day, it still is always a Broncos town. The Broncos, as we just mentioned, are not good and have not been for many years. And so it is a Thirst craved football town that needs something to they cheer. They need an outlet. And they are going to Boulder. They need an outlet. Yeah. So it's been great. The timing's been great. Personally, Gary. Here we go. What you got? We, and I think maybe because of my connection, my obvious connection. Correct. But also because of our love of the culture. Yes. We have chosen to bandwagon the Atlanta Falcons. The Dirty Birds! The Dirty Birds! And specifically, I didn't need to yell. Yeah, or clap because they warned us before the show they that yelled, if you they, clap, it they would warned be us bad. about yelling and clapping, and I just did both of them at the same Wham, time. Wham, bam. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. He's not following credence. I didn't I'm, use that I'm well. new to I'm new to the podcast world. Clearly, wrong usage of credence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Authoritarian rule. There will be a Look moment it up. for revival. <laughs> Bijan Robinson. <sighs> What a treat. The Falcons, in an off season of, I don't know why I'm holding a bat. Why yeah, am I, I was like, bat? are you twirling a baton? I am twirling a bat. Are you mixing a cauldron? I don't know what's happening. 
You churning butter? They did. They put a little hocus pocus into a cauldron they and they created Bijan Robinson. In an off season where all we did was talk about how nobody cares about running backs and the position has been devalued and it's unnecessary. Which are all true. This dude. This man. This man. This man missile. Oh my God. It's better than they could have ever hoped. Hundo P. He's second in the league right now in rushing yards. Only he had a Christian hundred and twenty four rushing yards on only nineteen carries against the Packers last the week. The dude is like a hybrid Toyota, just efficient. He's nuts. Even the video that's going viral right now oh. with him doing the cuts. I was like, is this Madden twenty five? He's insane. Madden thirty twenty five? It's nuts. It was nasty. They hit the jackpot. They did. Eighth overall pick, highest paid running back in the league. So Hello. he's getting his money. As he should. And he was getting in, in Austin. He had a Lamborghini uh, Lamborghini NIL deal. As he should. Yeah, hell yeah. Here's what I know. Come on. Being that I'm born and raised in Atlanta. Yep, yep. Broncos fan. Yeah, but also from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. That every team in Atlanta that is good. Yes. Or hopeful. Mm -hmm. Is met with an enthusiasm. Yep. That elicits a dance, Dirty Bird. The Dirty Bird, I remember that. Or a song. Mm -hmm. And so, Atlanta, here's your song. And now, hold on, hold on. Before you play this, okay. I think the listening audience and the viewing audience needs to know, this is like the worldwide premiere of this song. We both laid down our tracks yeah. without hearing each other's or even the beat. Like any good song. And it was just pieced together. It, it was just sort yes. of it was just sort of pieced together like yeah. Optimus Prime. It just yeah. came about. Yeah. We're laughing in the face of all music producers, yes. editors, yes. sound operators. Yeah, yes, yes. We're like, no, we can make a smash hit yes. with a microphone and, and some, some can do attitude. Studio time. That too. Are we ready? Nope. Play it anyway. Hey, check this out, Shouter. All you teens got them cheesecake cake factory playbooks out there. Got more packages than Amazon. Dirty birds can't relate. We only got one name to call. Let's go. Bees on left, bees on right. Bees on up the middle, bees on down the side. Bees on on the screen, bees on in the flat. Hell, bees on in the wildcat. Can't forget that. Bees on left, bees on right. Bees on up the middle, bees on down the side. Bees on on the screen, bees on in the flat. Hell, bees on in the wildcat. Can't forget that. He's a thief on the field, that's why he's robbing, son. Scat back, hell cat, he's a hell of a tailback. Mo par, mo yards, the pain is just begun. As soon as he touched the rock, the D is Warwick done. A true witch on the field, Brother Sanderson. A combo of Jamal and Pam Anderson. Wait a minute, hold up, those are different styles. What I'm really trying to say is that he's booby miles. Bees yeah. on left, bees on right. Bees on up the middle, bees on down the side. Bees on on the screen, bees on in the flat. Hell, bees on in the wildcat, can't forget that. If you wanna get a win and you rap a dirty bird, let me tell you what the key. Number seven, he absurd. If you haven't in the doubt, when you calling in that play, let me put you on some game. I'ma teach you what to say. It goes bees on left, bees on right. Bees on Captain Look, cause bees on looking flat. Bees on the scene. Man, he mugging me and got them other cities asking for that Bijan lingo, Bijan. Not to be confused with Dijon, but I swear he got that mustard. And you DBs need to catch up, catch up. Uh, uh, uh. Go Dijon. That's my Dijon. You don't need no quarterback. Get rid of him. You don't need no quarterback. Get rid of him. You don't need, you don't need, you don't need, you don't need, you don't need. Get rid of him. So, so here's the thing. Um, sometimes even though you love a thing, even though you worked in a thing, even though you were a fan of the thing, this thing being hip hop, sometimes you listen to yourself attempting it and you realize you're more Kesha than Lil' Kim. <laughs> and so I had to embody an artist that is of the moment. And so I took from Young Miami. Oh my gosh. And so my rap name, I saw you, you you're Young Sriracha. Young Sriracha, forget the O. Okay. 
I, just, just the you. Mm -hmm. I am, I'm not young, I'm 40. So I am middle-aged Atlanta. That's my rap name. Where I'm from and my age. And I feel like I can age into that. <laughs> it's like you're starting a dating profile. Yeah. Middle-aged Atlanta. Atlanta yeah. location. This is not to be used in the hyperbolic sense. I think that this song is going to get radio play in Atlanta. If it, if we can come up, if it can get a dance. We need some kid. Uh-huh. Do you know any kids? That's weird. You're almost that's a weird, 40. That's a weird I question. That's a weird that. question. We need some kids to yep. do what they do, to just take the song. Yes. To make up a TikTok Well, dance. you know I'm huge on TikTok, so I'm going to post are. this. I'm going to post this, and I'm, I'm going to generate a conversation. Can you come up with a... I'm going to generate a conversation in the comments. You Bijan know what I'm saying? Bijan love, Bijan right. Like, also, right? It, it writes itself. The dance... I think so. L the dance steps are quite literally in the lyrics. Yeah. Which I think that's a skill. That's an art. Yeah. That's something that shouldn't be going... That shouldn't go unnoticed. I think, Gary, when we set out to make this song mm -hmm. just a few hours ago... Yes. That the ultimate goal for us was to have this be on the Mount Rushmore... Yes. ...of line dances for black people at reunions... Correct. ...and events. You know, Cupid Shuffle. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. the Wobble... And hopefully now the yes. Bijan bounce. To be honest with you, it's all I've ever wanted for my community. For your community? Yes. The Polish community? That's what you said, right. <laughs> it's so good. Tom Brady, who is apparently a mentor to Shador Sanders, Correct. Correct. quarterback for Colorado, um, was talking to Dion about Shador, yep. and something was revealed. One question before I go, Tom, do you think a college kid needs a phantom, like a Rolls Royce? Nah, phantom? hey, no, it's not a phantom. It's a Rolls Royce cousin. I think he I needs to get his ass in the film room and spend as Thank much you. time in there as possible. Thank you, Tom. Less time in the car and more time in the film room. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. I've seen you have one, too, Tom. Don't think I've seen you. <laughs> I was just a rental. Hey, I had a few bucks in my pocket at that point. I, I'll see some car stories <laughs> when we're together next time. And I just... I don't want to be, you mentioned the word hyperbolic, which mm -hmm. I think is a much better word on this podcast than Credence. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be hyperbolic, but when you hear things like that, mm -hmm. that this 20-year-old has a Rolls Royce mm -hmm. and is on top of the world yeah. and is excellent at what he does already, yes. do you feel like you question every decision you ever made? Most of them. Most of them. Yeah. He's getting the side eye for sure in Boulder, too, because I know the Rolls Royce calling and it's not known for its MPG, if you will. We're talking 7.9 to the gallon. Yeah. And they are they are stout observers of... Prius people? Yes. Okay. Thank you. If if that, yeah. they get around on two wheels up there in Boulder. Oh, wow. So I know the Cullinan is I standing out. Okay. I know the Cullinan is standing out uh, there in Boulder. But hey, good for him. Yeah. If he can get it, good for him. Yeah. I, I saw them shopping at the mall once when I lived in Dallas. And? Uh, Deion Sanders and all of his kids, all of his sons, and they were at the Gucci store, and I, I too, was there. I was purchasing a wallet. They were buying luggage, so yeah. that just sort of shows you the, 100%. the, dis Two Americas. the disparity. And um, they were on the wall of bags, and I don't know which of the sons was lobbying Deion Sr. for why he deserves this $5,000 duffel mm -hmm. bag, which I imagine this was 2017, so six years ago. Yeah. They were but of high school age. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe Deion Sanders Jr. was in high school, so yeah. um, that was cool yeah. to see and be like, "Wow, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna aspire to be this 16 yeah, year old." Uh, but one in the day. meantime, I'm gonna spend 350 on this wallet, yeah, and I'm gonna take it out everywhere I go, and it's gonna have zero cash in it, yeah, because that's how you flexed, flex as me, yeah, <laughs> an insecure man in his yes. 30s, yes, yeah, yeah. Back then, I was I had just turned 30. Ah. It was a bit of a birthday present ah, for myself. Gotcha. You know? Oh, yeah. okay. You say birthday present, I say midlife crisis. It's fine. True, true. Speaking of which. Talk to me. Let's tease what's happening on Monday because when you get old like us, you start revisioning. You start doing like revisionist things and re you start retrospecting and this introspecting. Is, this is good. This is good. I, I, I teed this up for you earlier today and it's going to give us the weekend to really think yeah, about it. Yeah, But I don't need the weekend. Both of us do sports center. Yeah. Well, we need to dis de decipher the, the pattern here. Both of us do Sports Center, yeah. and there are legends who have come before us mm -hmm. that we could have only dreamed of doing a show with. So on Monday, we're gonna have an all-time Sports Center anchor that is that no longer works at the company, years removed. Yeah. Draft. Sure. Five rounds. Five. 
You're just like making parameters up on the spot. Who gets the first overall pick? You just pick? said we were going to talk about this, and then you literally just went ahead and just made all the parameters it's up. It's a draft. It's a draft. Five rounds. L picks first. Bam. Decided. That's fine. I'll pick second. Boom. Decided. I already have the second round pick. Second overall pick. Okay. In my head. All right. I only got one. I'm forfeiting all other picks because mine is the one. Let's do the outro as the song. Okay. Available where you can find your music. Okay. Where you can find your music. If you can find your music on SoundCloud. Yes. This isn't even Spotify level. This yep. is SoundCloud level. You can get the podcast on Spotify. I assume you're going to be able to get the song there too. Bees on left. Bees on right. Bees on up the middle. Bees on down the side. Bees on on the screen. Bees on in the back. Hell, bees on in the wildcat. Can't forget that.